Today we bring you a video about the game Don't Starve. Don't Starve is an online video game focusing on survival topic. Players can choose different characters and use their special skills to collect resources and fight against monsters so to survive. The key word in the whole process is resource. So, how are you gonna collect resources? How are you going to reuse your resources? By reflecting on these two questions, we can get some ideas of the potential typology of players. So we have four different players arguing that they are playing in this. Uh, they are playing this game in four different ways. Player one defines himself as a killer and an explorer. He chose the character Wigfrid. This character has strong fighting power and high health, but has extremely strict requirements on survival conditions. He says, "What initially attracted me to this role was he was her extremely high health, which made me think she could have a strong survival ability." During the game, I like to interact with all the. All the elements in the game, including grass, trees, buildings, and animals. Also, I called up the map very frequently to make sure that I was always exploring new areas. These behaviors are in line with the characteristics of the of the explorer player type, discovering unknown and and focusing on exploring. As a character in a survival game, he's not keen on building but concentrated on. Fighting monsters, as you can see from the gameplay footage, he fights against all kinds of animals,、uh, even if he can't get any useful items. What's more, Wigfrid's duty in the team is also to obtain materials and food for his companions through battles. Therefore, this style reflects the characteristics of a killer, focusing on winning and direct peer-to-peer -peer competition. Player two sees himself playing the game as more of the immersion component, especially to discover the things that he won't have chance to find out in real life. He says the most important thing to me about playing games is relaxation. I don't really care about what I can achieve in the game. I don't really care about my game level or my game skills and how I compete with others. I also don't care if I can. Socialize or expand my circle of friends in the game. I focus more on the pleasure experience that games give me in different forms. So the graphics and the story and the background music will be the criteria for whether I like a game or not. Therefore, I usually do not choose a character with special attributes, but rather a general character. During the game, I don't rush to find the most efficient way to survive, such as building science machines or advanced tools or fighting enemies. I usually start with the most primitive ways to survive and explore the map to a great extent, trying to understand the boundaries and limits of the game. On the contrary. Player three sees himself playing the game as more of the social component. He says, "I spend a lot of time on collect acorn seeds, which were originally material that could be used to upgrade tools. But I collected them just to place an expressive pattern on the ground because I thought it would be more fun to interact with my friends in this way. But can these two components be combined together?" Player four answers this question. She thinks both components are active in her gaming experience. For immersion component, escapism and discovery are combined. She starts by choosing her character and accumulating a certain number of basic materials such as straw, sticks, wood, etc., in order to meet the basic requirements for survival. A survival game such as Don't Starve usually requires the player to be fully engaged or risk penalties such as a reduced life, a reduced spirit, etc. While playing, players can eliminate the interference in real life and temporarily focus on the game, which is called escapism. In addition, the character chosen by her has a has a different skill set from the other characters at the beginning of the game. Walter, the character's name, is equipped with a slingshot at the beginning of the game, and the player is required to create different ammunition to use this tool in a way that is different from what the other players can experience during during the game. 
This is a discovery. For social component, teamwork and socializing are combined. She cooperates with other players to achieve achievements by building homes and attacking monsters in the game. In addition, her social trait is represented by Walter's ability to tell stories, to raise other players' spirits during the night when a fire is being built, which helps other players to survive. In conclusion. Don't Starve is a game that essentially gives players a lot of freedom, with a large map size, a large selection of characters, and a tool library with a significant number of tools. And while you can only build tools within its defined tool range, it also offers different modules for players to choose from, somewhat increasing the ease of teamwork and creating space for innovation, and allowing different types of players to cooperate without losing their individual play styles. It is likely that different types of players will be able to create new styles of play when working together and spend the night in unexpected ways.